So here's basically what happened. This guy left a comment last Wednesday on my uh, YouTube channel, and he left a comment on on a video I did uh, a little while back um, about uh, how the criminal justice system is going to use racism to uh, justify Derek Chauvin's actions. Right? That was that was basically the the premise of of the of of, of the video there. And I got a I got a comment left by this guy. Uh, I'm not going to tell you his name, but if you go to the video titled uh, "Derek Chauvin's Trial Shows Systemic Racism," I'm sure you'll see his comment on there, unless he's deleted the comment. So he leaves this comment sometime, you know, in the in the morning, and uh, I I read it. It was crazy, and then I went to like try to respond to it which I know I shouldn't do. I shouldn't feed the trolls, but it was just so wild that I felt like I, I like had to fucking respond. Well, it was gone. So he deleted the comment. And then a few days later on Sunday, he reposted a new comment. Uh, that's all, And it's equally as bananas, right? So I wanted to kind of read the original comment and then read the, the refresh comment and kind of debunk a lot of the shit that he's saying. So uh, it starts out by saying, one, this is the original comment that he left last Wednesday. He goes, one, we watched Floyd die of a drug overdose. No, we didn't. Uh, I debunked, I mean, that's been debunked several times. Uh, there's numerous articles that have debunked it. There's numerous medical professions that professionals that went on trial and said that it wasn't a drug overdose. And uh, I, I, I believe there was a, a, a patron by the name of Aiden that sent me a link that said that it's called audio paradola. It's you hear what you want to hear in, in um, uh, audio messages that are uh, a little gurgled and tough to hear. And Eric Nelson was trying to lead one of these medical professionals to think that it was saying one thing, but when it was heard clearly, you could hear that Floyd say, I ain't on no drugs. And what Eric Nelson was manipulating witnesses to hear is, I did too many drugs. So I ain't on no drugs. I did too many drugs, right? So immediately this, this guy starts with a lie. He starts with a false statement. It's a bullshit statement. His knee was on his shoulder, not his neck. It's also a bullshit statement because his knee was definitely on his neck. You can see it in the difference, right? Uh, I don't know if you guys know who Steven Crowder is. Uh, he is the human embodiment of a dumpster fire, um, and he's awful. Uh, his channel currently has a strike on it uh, for the same reason that I do, but I feel like what I'm about to describe should have given him a strike about deceptive practices because he basically had a, a cop kneel on him for nine minutes to prove that you can't get asphyxiated but the position of the cop's knee on on crowder was a flat knee across his entire back most of the weight was planted back because he was he was sitting to the back and when you look at chauvin chauvin's knee is directly here it's on the back of his neck right and all of the weight is being placed onto that knee and pushing down on george floyd who has his hands behind his back, can't shift to get leverage. So his neck is being pushed, his windpipe is being smushed, and his nose is being smushed up. So there's not air coming up. So immediately, wrong. Uh, a lot of subjects makes excuses when arrested, it's normal. Yes, but he wasn't making excuses. He wanted to know what he was being arrested for, and he was having a clear panic attack. Uh, if you've ever been in a real fight, looks like not, you would know never to let the let uh let the guy up when you get them down. In a millisecond, you're toast. False. If you are fighting someone that's honorable, because and by the way, I have been in fights. Uh, I've been in street fights because in India I would get I, that's just like a thing that would happen. So I would get and I would get beat up a lot. I'm not afraid to fucking admit that. I've lost more fights than I've won. Uh, I took a bunch of uh martial arts classes i took taekwondo and ishinru uh where part of the the challenge was that i got into the advanced classes where we would have sparring matches um so i would be in constant sparring matches and again if you're if you have honor 
when the opponent is down and they are down and they count it out, you don't continue to sit, you don't kill. Martial arts never trains you to murder people. Street fights uh, that I've gotten into, once I've lost, I've lost. And they didn't decide that they need to pin me down till there's no life left in me. You're advocating for murder is basically what this person is doing. And you're trying to attack my character. You don't know my fucking life. You don't think skinny scrawny guys know how to fight? We're bony motherfuckers. You don't want to get hit by a skinny scrawny guy because I'm all bone. You understand that that hurts more. It bruises and breaks skin a lot more than someone that's like got more meat on their bones, right? Like you, you obviously you would know that if you had been in a fight in a millisecond, you're no, you're not. Again, it's about honor. If you are facing a murderer like Derek Chauvin, then yeah, that guy's going to kill you because he's a sociopath. Uh, he resisted and kicked. No, he didn't. Uh, slave patrols to racist police. Police enforce USA law. What garbage history is that you spewed? I spewed U.S. history. <laughs> Just a total denial of what history exists in this country, right? Like, there's countless proof after proof after proof that the United States Police Department are a bunch of racist thugs, and it comes from slave patrols. That's where the police to, uh, uh, policing originated in the United States. Uh, so it has racist origins, but then it's like, you're, no, it's not. I'm just going to ignore history and live in my own reality. They police enforce USA law. Again, just because something is written into law doesn't make it morally right. Morality and legality are two completely different things. Like weed, for example. Uh, and then he, number, this is number six. Uh, you are absolutely foolish, emotionally invested in an already determined outcome. Watch the trial. How many of your people have suicide bombed innocents? You want to sit here and hate white culture while your own people are champions of violent tendencies, rape, suicide bombing, stabbing. Where's your outrage? Fix your own doorstep before you worry about others. You are in North America, free and safe, doing well enough to do this. Why are you here? Because our society is incredibly racist, needs to be burned down. So your parents or whatever came here for a worse life. Go fix your own broken culture, then talk to me about mine, asshole. So that last part is the is the ramp up to to the level of racism that I had like forgotten existed in our society. But it's always a good reminder to know that these kind of pricks are out there. First of all, uh, you don't think America commits rape, suicide bombing, stabbings? I'm not free and safe in North America. I'm a brown man in North America, a post 9-11. Do you know how much hate and vitriol has been thrown my way? And America isn't free of its crimes against humanity. We're witnessing how America is <clears throat> trying to get away with a crime against humanity. We're witnessing that with the Chauvin trial. What they're doing to Julian Assange is a human rights violation. How br black and brown people are treated is a human rights violation. How America uses foreign policy to create xenophobia and racism and justify bullshit language like the one you just dropped on my fucking channel is a human rights violation. I didn't choose to fucking come here. My dad chose to come here because he wanted more money. And they gave him a fucking promotion and they moved him to the United States and I got my ass dragged here. Again, you don't know my fucking life for you to make any inferences. And just because I can do this doesn't mean that I don't have other jobs. I don't have other means of income that I have to maintain in order to continue being able to do this and try to make this a point of income. Also, it isn't it my fucking right in this country to do the jobs that I please to do. So if I'm a, if the fact that I'm allowed to do this doesn't mean that I'm rich. It just means that I have been gracious enough to know when there's a good deal on microphones and people have been super fucking kind to donate shit to me like my mixer. But I fucking worked my ass off to pay for this computer, the monitor, the keyboards and all that kind of shit. I still have trouble to deal with. I make virtually no money. I make enough money to pay my bills and that livelihood was taken away from me thanks to a pandemic. So again, 
this motherfucker doesn't know my life. <laughs> but he's going to criticize it anyway, right? Oh, you came to America for a better life. That's the fucking ad that America puts out there. That's America's advertisement. Come to the land of milk and honey. And then when you come here, you're basically a wage slave. College, astronomically more expensive here than anywhere else in the world. For what? A piece of paper that I can get so then I can get two jobs that have nothing to do with my degree? I have to get a second part-time job to, you know, pay, be able to pay my bills. Whatever I had saved up over the course of the last year is not going to last forever, and I recognize that. I do this on top of a bunch of other shit, motherfucker. And yes, I also c criticize my own country, my country of birth. I criticize the UK and the US and Canada and any country that violates human rights, any country that goes against equality, any country trying to champion capitalism, which is a system that thrives on inequality and slavery. But no, let's talk about how, quote, my people suicide. I'm not from the Middle East, dickbag. In one fail swoop, you proved how ignorant you were. Here's the revised comment that he left on my video uh, just a few days ago. I think two days ago. He comes back and he tries to sound more reasonable, right? I, I just read you the original comment, which was bananas. Uh, you are wrong on many levels. Floyd died of a drug abuse, period. Nope. Proved that wrong. And I'll continue saying nope to anybody that wants to sit there and say that he died of a drug overdose. Stop fanning the flames of hatred. There is no systemic racism, which is wildly false because there is systemic racism. It was legislated. The 1986 anti-drug uh, anti bill was specifically built to attack crack cocaine, which was found more in black communities and low-income communities. And that was built on top of Nixon's war on drugs which was also racist, which one of Nixon's advisors basically came up, not basically, he did come out and say, there's a whole video about it on my channel that you can watch. There is no systemic racism. Yes, there's systemic racism. It's easy to see if you don't have fucking red, white, and blue blinders over your fucking face. If it was then why do people dream of going to the USA for a better life? I don't know anybody who dreams of coming to the USA for a better life. A lot of people immigrate here uh, because the United States has caused coups, put dictators in place, or is actively waging a war on them nonstop so they become refugees in order to come here. Or because the United States pr uh, keeps pushing uh, fossil fuels and causing climate degradation, they become climate refugees and have to come here to be like, hey, see how you're fucking up our country that we have to come here now because you're ruining our country and trying to steal our resources for your fucking economic benefit? No, I don't know anybody that chooses to come here other than I landed jo a job here or I got accepted to a school here. Or I have a family here now. Nobody comes. I've never heard of anybody that's like, oh, I've heard America is the greatest country in the world. I should go there. That's also not how immigration works. Because anyone not white will be treated as donkeys. They, they are. You live in a fucking red, white, and blue bubble, bro. Look outside. You are the, the truest example of how American imperialism works on a populace, how propaganda affects the human brain. People should do studies on this person. Here we go. You're a coward who is dividing the nation, lying about everything, preaching an ideology. You are trash. How am I dividing the nation when I'm literally talking about solidarity? I'm literally talking about justice. I'm literally talking about equality. 
this dude, and I'm assuming he's white because of how much like white pride he's throwing up in the comment section, is so scared of change, is so scared of the change that anybody calling for equality, he claims is, is calling for division. Because when other races and other, you know, creeds and genders and all that get brought up to his same level, he can't trounce over anybody anymore. He doesn't know how to show respect to people. He doesn't know how to articulate an argument. This is the last sentence he says, you seem to be doing well. You're not white. How do you do it? I'm I'm not white and I'm not doing well. I work my ass off. There are nights I don't sleep. There's, uh, I mean, my, my physical and mental health go to shit for weeks at a time because of how hard I work and how much, how much effort I put into things. And I got to, you know, take care of house stuff. Try to be, you know, try to have a social life so I don't burn out all the time. This motherfucker doesn't know my life. It's interesting that this comment showed up because I, I literally had forgotten that this level of vitriol and racism is around because it's, I knew it existed. It's just, it's, they've been so quiet. The last time I faced this level of vitriol, I did a video about the alt-right and, and made fun of them. Like that's what <laughs> uh, got me this level of vitriol. I just wanted to read that to, to you guys because I because it's just so it's just so insane. Uh, thank you so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed this content, uh, please make sure that you hit the like button, hit the share button, and make sure you're subscribed to my channel, whether it's on Rockfin, YouTube, or Facebook. Especially Facebook and YouTube, they often uncensor people, uh, un unsubscribe people, and they censor this content. So if you want to keep up to date, make sure you're subscribed. Hit that bell button so you get notifications of when I'm putting up new videos and when I am going live. I usually go live uh, on uh, Fridays and on Mondays. Uh, and if you want more information about a, a bunch of the other stuff that I do, uh, whether it's my Forkful of Noodles podcast, the Taboo Table Talk interview podcast, or the Road Reflections live streams, uh, make sure you go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. There you'll find past episodes of, uh, of various shows that I, uh, that I do, as well as information about when I'll be performing live virtual comedy shows the forkful of noodles live virtual comedy shows uh the dates and tickets will be available directly on my website but if you're also on financial stable ground you can help contribute to the show financially by making a one-time donation or becoming a sustaining member which gets you free tickets and bonus content and go to krishmohanhaha.com slash donate to to make any kind of financial contributions but if you can't it's not a necessity most of my stuff is available for free and for everybody to enjoy. So again, go to krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A. -H 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 -A, and I hope to see you at the next video.